In this video, I'm going to tell you about the bug type and why it's better than expected in Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow. This will be an analysis on the bug type, its Pokemon, their stats, pros and cons, moves, and how they do in a typical playthrough. Since none of the bug type Pokemon are trade evolutions, we'll ignore the rules for now. So now that I explain what I'll cover, let's jump right into this analysis. Beginning the analysis, we have to cover the bug type once more. Like I said earlier, Bug started off as a poor offensive type, but was a good defensive counter to two of the best types in game. Bug was only strong against Poison, Grass, and Psychic while barely crawling on Fighting, Flying, Ghost, and Fire. This type was made to counter the best type in all of Gen 1, though thanks to weak moves, Bug is too weak offensively. In future games, Bug isn't very effective against Poison, but Poison does neutral damage to Bug for some weird reason. Bug resisted fighting ground and grass while being plucked by flying, poison, rock, and fire. The weaknesses are only manageable due to very few rock moves being in-game and poison moves being very weak. Though the only weaknesses to worry about are flying and fire since those are far stronger and far more common. Starting the list of Pokemon, we have the very best bug type in Gen 1, Pinsir. It's interesting to note that despite Pinsir being the best bug type in Gen 1, it doesn't have any same type moves to utilize. Pinsir is 65 HP, 125 attack, 100 defense, 55 special, and 85 speed. While the stats seem great, Pinsir will only excel with powerful normal moves. Pinsir's good traits are having high attack and defense, having access to Slash, having Swords Dance to boost other normal moves, being easily obtained from the game corner, but that's pretty much it. Pinsir's bad traits are having low HP and special, not getting coverage moves at all, only being able to hit ghosts with seismic toss, and being a much weaker alternative to some normal types. Regardless of those downsides, Pinsir will still prove to be amazingly strong and helpful for any team. However, you'd be far better off using something like Persian that can get same type on Slash and Hyper Beam, or using Dodrio which can get same type on Hyper Beam and utilize Drill Peck nicely. Those two can beat the league far better than Pinsir could. Up next is the second best bug type in all of Gen 1, Venomoth. Despite being part poison, Venomoth acts more like a makeshift psychic type that's vulnerable to one of its own best moves. Venomoth has 70 HP, 65 attack, 60 defense, 90 special, and 90 speed. While it looks weaker than Pinsir, Venomoth has a lot of special tricks to help it stand out. Venomoth's good traits are that it has good special and speed, learns psychic moves, has access to sleep powder and stun spore, and being easy to find in all three versions. But once again, that's just about it. Venomoth's bad traits are having low attack and defense, being vulnerable to psychic, and its powder moves being inaccurate. Even though Venomoth has psychic moves to help it utilize good special, it's still inferior compared to other actual psychic types in terms of power. It's not much of a stretch to say even Haunter is better than Venomoth. At least Haunter is immune to normal and it hits much harder with Psychic than Venomoth ever could. Up next is the third best bug type in all of Gen 1, Scyther. Despite having the second highest attack of every bug type, Scyther is the most limited moveset of any bug type, which is kind of sad. Scyther has 70 HP, 110 attack, 80 defense, 55 special, and 105 speed. Again, it might sound powerful, but Scyther can't make the most of its sky-high attack due to its moves. Scyther's good traits are that it has high attack and speed, has access to Slash, can boost its attack with Swords Dance, being easily obtained from the game corner, but yet again, that's about it. Scyther's bad traits are having low special, having a severely limited moveset with only normal moves, only getting a weak wing attack in yellow version, and being partially flying type. Despite its bad traits, Scyther can still be a decent bug type. However, it'll need a lot of support from other teammates if it's to do good in the league. Otherwise, Scyther won't get too far and fall very, very short. As for the remaining bug types, they're very weak and far from perfect, so they don't need a separate analysis. Butterfree has identical moves to Venomoth, but with far lower stats. Sure, it also gets Sleep Powder and Psychic, but Butterfree has worse defenses than Venomoth and can't do much with his good special. Also, having Flying as a secondary type really holds Butterfree back a lot. Parasect has great attack and defenses, but average HP and terrible speed. Parasect might have access to a 100% accurate Sleep move and Spore, but it can't outspeed opponents to immobilize them with Sleep. It also doesn't help that Parasite is part grass, making it the only Pokemon in Gen 1 and in Pokemon history altogether to have three four times weaknesses. Talk about unlucky. Beedrill has good attack, but very low HP and defenses. 
Sure, Beedrill might have the strongest same type bug move in Twin Needle and Pin Missile, but it's far too slow and frail to utilize those moves properly. Also, since Twin Needle and Pin Missile are very weak, Beedrill will have to rely on normal moves to do any good damage, or rely on Swords Dance to make Twin Needle and Pin Missile hit harder. Next, we make it to the bug type moves, and despite there being very few of them, they're nowhere near good and shouldn't be used on serious move sets. Leech Life is the most commonly known bug move, yet the weakest attack. Leech Life has 20 power, 100 accuracy, and 15 power points, healing roughly half the damage inflicted on the target. Pin Missile is only learned by Beedrill and Jolteon, and while it is stronger than Leech Life sometimes, it has a big chance to not hit frequently due to accuracy. Pin Missile is 14 power, 85 accuracy, and 20 power points, having a chance to hit 2-5 to five times, yet a very good chance to not hit once. Twin Needle is the best bug move in all of Gen 1 despite being limited to only Beedrill. Unlike Pin Missile before it, Twin Needle has a guaranteed chance to hit twice. Twin Needle is 25 power, 100 accuracy, and 20 power points. Strangely enough, with the second hit having a 20% chance to inflict poison. String Shot is the only bug move to be a status move, yet is limited to the Butterfree and Beedrill lines. String Shot is 95 accuracy and 40 power points. It lowers the opponent's speed by one stage. It might be helpful early in the game, but it won't be important for any serious move set. Finally, we make it to how each bug type does in a typical playthrough, and it'll be quite interesting to see how well each one does against the main challenges. One obvious thing to point out is that most bug types won't do good against Brock unless they have an ally with different moves. Pinster will do best against Erica, Sabrina, Giovanni's ground types, Lorelai's Jinx, Bruno, Agatha's Ghosts with Seismic Toss, and Blue's Alakazam with normal moves, Rhydon with Seismic Toss, Executor and Venusaur with normal moves. Venomoth will do best against Misty Stormy with Leech Life, Erica, Koga, Sabrina, Giovanni, Bruno, Agatha, and Blue's Rhydon and Venusaur. Scyther will do best against Erica, Sabrina, Giovanni except the Rhydon line, Lorelai's Jinx, and Blue's Alakazam and Venusaur. However, I won't cover what Butterfree, Parasect, and Beedrill will do best against due to how Butterfree's a weaker Venomoth, and how Parasect and Beedrill are defensively bad. Parasect might have good qualities due to his decent defense and special along with great moveset, but Beedrill isn't worth using for any typical playthrough due to having average speed with terrible defenses. Sure, Beedrill might get better moves than Pinsir or Scyther, but its stats make said moves impossible to use properly. In conclusion, the bug type was good in concept, but very underutilized. Most bug types had unfavorable matchups versus some of Kanto's usual challenges, and that's due to no good same type bug moves, no coverage for strong bugs, and the early bugs being extremely weak. However, many of the bug type's flaws get fixed moving into Gen 2, and I'll later talk about what buffs the bug type as a whole gets. Hey look, that's all I got for now. If you enjoyed my analysis on the bug type in Gen 1, please give it a like or comment telling me what you enjoyed the most about this video. Until next time, have a good day.